is seen followed followed by mother sharda devi at one place mother sharda devi makes a statement i have done so much in this world more than what i have to do to set an ideal so all these people come here to set an ideal it is not just come here and go away as i told you many times what is avatara it comes from the word avatarana they descend down from a higher plane to this lower plane the earth come to live like us can you see any speciality some weapons or ornaments or anything in mother you can't see anything she so so simple when somebody wanted to see divine mother durga kali and other things in her they wanted to see that she told no let me be just your mother because if it is your mother just like your mother you can be close to her suppose you have so many weapons and she has so many qualities that these the glories then you will have a distance you cannot approach her now you can approach her you can talk to her you can quarrel with her just like a child is so close to the mother you can be so close to the mother that's why you can see the speciality of this divine mother here in this simple form as i told you about the avatara what did krishna tells about his avatara yada yada hi dharmasya glanihi bhavati bharata tadatma अभ्युत्तानम धर्म से तदात्मा सृजा हम परिणा साधूना विनाशा च दुष्कृता धर्म संस्थापनाताय संभवा युगे युगे वेन एवर देर इज ए डिक्लाइन इन द रैचुअसनेस एंड वेन देर इज राइज इन द अनरैचुअसनेस ऐ कम डाउन अगेन अगेन टेक इन ह्यूमन फॉर्म वाई टू प्रोटेक्ट द गुड एंड टू डेस्ट्रॉय द बैट सो नाउ लेट अस सी वॉट इज दिस गुड एंड वॉट इज बैट ड्यूरिंग द कृत युगा और द सत्य युगा You see the Varaha Avatar, the Madhya Avatar, and other Avatar, Narasimha Avatar during the Krita Yuga or the Satya Yuga. They were demons, bad people, and gods, good people, gods, and other things. So they could easily identify the bad and kill or destroy the bad and the Avatar. It was easy for them. Then what about the next Yuga from the Satya Yuga? Next Rama Avatar was in the Treta Yuga. at that time where were the demons where were the gods now from different worlds in the satyuga they came down to two countries india and rama had to build a bridge to sri lanka they are in different country the demons in sri lanka and here in the another country okay from different worlds their demons and the gods have come to countries different countries what about during the time of krishna dwapara yuga now the demons and the gods they have come to same family what is that kuru family where were they the kauravas the demoniacal quality pandavas the godly divine qualities so they have come to the same family okay again it is very easy for the lord to come with his chakra or whatever see after the mahabharata war this bhima and arjuna were proud that they killed all the enemies then they were competing each other to take the name i was the main decisive factor to win the war in the mahabharata then they were taken to the battlefield krishna showed them one of the head of a demon or the son of bhima was they put on the top of the battlefield and it was watching everything it was it had the life just ahead of the demon it was watching everything then they asked who was great who killed many people in the war the bad people were killed was it bhima was it arjuna or any other people then that head of that the son of bhima told no i saw only that discus chakra sudarshana chakra going everywhere and killing everybody nobody killed it was the lord who destroyed the bad so it was a it's the lord now it's easy he destroyed all the demoniac people there now what about kali yuga now in this yuga where we are living where is the demons and the devatas entered where are they living in the same personality in each of us we have both demoniacal qualities and divine qualities now if the lord has to come and kill or destroy the bad then none of us will survive here everybody has to go so now it is not 
it is paritranaya sadhu nam to protect and uplift the good is still there but destruction of the bad it's no more there why how then what is it it is the transformation of the bad it's not the destruction of the bad their paritranaya sadhu nam still hold goods it's it holds good the same thing everywhere but vinasha is your dushkutam it is not the destruction of the bad or killing of the bad now it is parivartanaya dushkutam transformation of the bad people you see so many bad people like girish chandra ghosh used to tell i have committed so many sins the alcohol bottle the he drank if he told that if you would pile up it would reach the heaven skies he told i have not commit not come here without committing any any of the sins you cannot name that i have not committed that sins so the lord gave shelter to sinners saints everybody now what is the theory now transformation so that's why you can see mother is come so simple no weapons sim simpler than the simplest nobody could identify that she was so great so that you can easily approach her that is the speciality of this avatara the universal motherhood who has come there to help us all in many many ways so let us see what some of the disciples of holy mother have to say about the divine mother there was one swami ishananda who was one of the direct disciples of mother sharada devi who got the mantra diksha from mother sharada devi when swami ishananda ji maharaj was asked by another sanyasin a young sanyasin as to what was the difference between sharada devi and any other ladies sharada devi was also another mother or a lady there are so many other ladies your sisters your mothers you have so many other ladies are there what was the difference between mother sharada devi because he has seen her he has seen everybody there so what is the difference between a lady other lady ordinary lady and mother sharada devi when asked by swami ishananda ji difference between mother holy mother sharada devi and any other woman of the world so what did he tell in our home we have our sisters mothers and so many other women what is the difference between that with mother sharada devi now swami ishananda ji maharaj not ishananda ishananda ji sorry ishananda ji maharaj is telling have you seen any human being totally desireless have you seen any human being totally desireless nirvasana desireless up to the level of the subtle desires so and vasana means potential desires which is in the subtle form subtlest form even that was not there in mother so that is the difference totally desireless nirvasana completely desireless that is what we saw in mother sharada devi everybody of us whether man or woman we are bundle of desires god alone is desireless we have come to this world because we have desires we have karmas but avataras and ishvara kutis the great saints they come to this world not by the force of the desires or the karma they are not forced but they come freely voluntarily not by desires or karma but by compassion compassion to the living beings to the good of the world now let us take up another example swami shantanand ji maharaj another disciple of holy mother in 1977 it was asked to this swami what is the speciality of this swami ji shantanand ji maharaj direct disciple of holy mother he had seen mother from his childhood as a small child he grew up in jairambati he had seen mother and served her also from his childhood up till he grew up up till mother gave up her body he served her too from his childhood and also later on in jairambati everywhere so he tells when he was asked what is the main characteristic of sharada devi that distinguishes others from shri sharada devi according to you 
he told, mother was completely egoless. Why am I telling this? We have to take mother as the ideal. What is ideal? We also should get at least some of those qualities in our, into our life. That is the ideal, adarsha. Why do they come here with so many ideals? As he told mother, told that I have done more than to set an ideal, more than what I had to do. You know, in our order, they tell Ramakrishna as inspiration. Swami Vivekananda then, who is he? Interpretation of that inspiration given by Sri Ramakrishna. Then what about Holy Mother? Implementation. To implement all this inspiration and interpretation in her life in all the difficult situation. You know, some of the devotees, they complain. Yes, Ramakrishna was great avatar. He did so much of tapasya, so much of posterity, so much of devotion, so much of this thing. Can we do that? Is it possible for us? Swami Vivekananda was a great sannyasi and he could do that. We are householders. You sannyasins may try, but how can we householders with all the problems and vicissitudes and every day to day such difficulties, how can we practice that? Now we cannot escape. Why? Mother stayed in the family like a householder amongst mad people with all the difficulties, with all the troubles. And in spite of all the work she used to do, she has to work so much from, she used to get up morning, three o'clock in the morning. And the whole day and night she used to work, she used to do japa, puja, everything, serve Ramakrishna, serve the devotees, cook for the devotees. Every day she has to prepare more than 60 chapatis, dal, rice and varieties. Vivekananda comes, special dal has to be prepared. Ramachandra Datta comes, special dal to be prepared, special things to be prepared. If Ramakrishna, now for him special diet has to be prepared. She has to run. She's lagja pata vrite. Now she cannot come when all the other men were there. During those days, there was this parda system. Women couldn't come in front of the men, other men fox. So now when nobody is there, she was to rush to the room of Ramakrishna, clean all those things, make the bed, everything, and then go to the work. You have such wonderful bathroom and toilets in your house. Mother didn't have open. She had to go to Ganga for everything. Open. Everything. Early morning, three o'clock, you have to go. One day when she went to the bath, getting down the Ganga, she stepped on the crocodile. And how, where did she live? In such a small space, she lived. Everything, storeroom was that, kitchen was that, bedroom was that, everything in that small room. We have so many facilities, we have so many things and we complained, we cannot take the name of the God, we can't do like her. But with all the difficulties, she told, she showed that every day she used to perform more than one and a half hundred, one, it is lakh, hundred, one and a half lakh or three lakh japas every day. More than 100,000 japa, 150,000 japa every day. With all this work, without fail, she used to do. Now can you tell, oh, we are householders, we have so many difficulties. No, can't escape. Why? Mother has come to the implementation and she has shown us, at least if she has done so much, taken so much of difficulty to come down to this world, got all the problems, everything in this life, why has she come to do that? So that seeing her life, you may imbibe some qualities and get inspired and do something, at least something and divinize your life. That is very, very important. So you can see what Swami Shantanandaji is telling. Completely egoless. Human beings have ego. God only is egoless. To some extent, we can find in the children, small children, they are egoless. God has created this world. He doesn't proclaim that I have created this world. He is egoless. He does not even write his own autobiography. Has God any time written his autobiography? We do little things and we want that we should be praised and we have to, they put our names in the boards and some people, you know, I've seen that in India, they donate some tube light or, it is not tube light tea of Durban, but it's tube light, you know, and some tiles and the whole tube light will be covered with their name and their family names that the light cannot come outside. They want to show up their names. On the tiles everywhere in the temple, they want their name and name and name. Has God created and done so much to us 
Has he asked for any name? Any time did you see mother wanting for name egoless? Egoless. So that is the speciality of mother. Now, there are, I can go on expounding and telling, I think I will keep some for the Saturday thing, but there is one special incident which I told Ramesh Ishwarlal today, I'm going to tell that because his Gurudev was revered Ranganathanand Ji Maharaj, one of the presidents of our order, a great president of our order. So he has got Mantra Diksha from revered Ranganathanand Ji Maharaj. So another Swamiji lived when he was in Pakistan in Lahore. Swamiji, he, had, he was running the center at that time, undivided India in Lahore, Pakistan. At that time, several Swamiji's Mukhyanandaji, Ji, Ananyananda Ji, they lived with him, under, under him. So one of the Swamiji's, Ananyananda Ji Maharaj, a great soul, was very, very junior to Ranganathan Ji Maharaj, he lived with them. This incident is told by Swami Ananyananda Ji. At that time, Rabbi Ranganathan Ji Maharaj was in Hyderabad and Swami Ananyananda Ji Maharaj was also in Hyderabad. So at that period when this happened, Revere Ranganathan Ji Maharaj was then one of the vice presidents of Ramakrishna Mutt and Mission. He also lived in Hyderabad. Now, the person who is narrating this is telling, I had to go to Hyderabad for a few days for a job. That's when I heard the below incident from Revere Ananyanandaji Maharaj. What is that? Three local ladies of Hyderabad. Hyderabad is now in Telangana. Earlier it was the whole of Andhra Pradesh. So Telugu speaking people there. So three local ladies of Hyderabad, Ashrama, they were going on pilgrimage to Belur Mat, Kamarpukur and Jairambati as well as Dakshineshwar and other places related to Holy Trio. As they were supposed to leave for pilgrimage, the previous day before leaving, they went to most revered Ranganathanand Ji Maharaj to take his blessing, who was at Hyderabad Mat. And then one of the lady devotees told revered Maharaj Ji, I have got permission from Jairambati to stay there in Jairambati for three days. Revered Maharaj smiled and said, very good, very good. It's a privilege to stay with Sri Sri Ma Sharda Devi for three days. Now, when Ranganath Anji Maharaj told it's a privilege to live with mother, the doubt came to her mind. How, what? The devotee told in grief, Maharaj, how nice it would have been if Sri Sri Ma would be there in Jairambati now also. Maharaj is telling it is a privilege to live with mother in the Jairambati. And she is telling even if now mother would be there, how nice it would have been. Maharaj, how nice it would have been if Sri Sri Ma would have been there in Jairambati even now. Also, as going so far, we are so old now, we don't have much money, we are not very rich people, so much of money, spending the money, we have to go to Jairambati so far off. And going so far, I would have been really blessed if mother would have been living now. To which revered Maharaj, Ranganathanj Maharaj became very grave and serious. What? What do you say? Mother doesn't live in Jairambati. Mother is still there. In Jairambati, she lives there. Don't worry. Go. Mother still lives there. He told these words with so much of stress. The devotees thought that Maharaj is telling, trying to comfort them. That's all. At once, now, Revered Ranganathanji Maharaj again told in a serious voice, I say, Mother is still alive in Jairambati. She still lives there. Even today, the lady was surprised seeing revered Maharaj speaking with such a serious tone as his words were always simple and sincere. The next day, the devotee set out for journey as there were these three ladies. They reached Belur Mat and in a couple of days, they reached Sri Sri Matri Mandir, that is Jairambati, birthplace of Sri Mother Sharda Devi. At now, the birthplace is exactly on the spot where Mother Sharda Devi was born. After visiting Kamarpukur, birthplace of Ramakrishna, first three days they passed in Jairambati and they were all set to return to Belurmat the next day. As today, that is that day was their last day in Jairambati. After night prasadam, food, you know, in India, especially in Bengal, the offering, the night supper is given to the Lord at 8.15 or 8.30. After offering comes out, then 
that will be distributed as prasad to everybody with the supper to everybody in Belur Mat also. So it will be almost 8.45 or 9 o'clock supper. So this lady had the prasadam, night supper. Now the other two women went to bed. But this third woman who had asked Ranganathanji Maharaj, she couldn't go to bed. She was very much sorrowful because she has to leave Jairambati tomorrow. The third one was sitting alone outside the guest house after the supper. It is maybe now 10 o'clock or 10.30, 11 o'clock. Lacking sleep and in sorrow, she was talking to herself. As I miss my mother Sharda Devi very much. Everything is there here in Jairambati, old and new house of mother. The road in which three or four years old Sharda Devi walked. She used to walk and go to the river Amodar, take bath there, come to that another lake. The same paddy field where mother walked. Everything is there, but I don't find mother here. She was very sorrowful to think that I couldn't see mother. I couldn't meet mother. I'm here tomorrow. I have to leave. Shama Sundari Devi, the mother of Sharda Devi used to walk. Everything is there. Tears rolled down her cheeks. And she thought I have to return home tomorrow. She took the holy Jairambati soil, tied it in a piece of cloth while thinking her whole life, just she has to spend with this memory of the soil. Because she is already old, she is not so rich. Maybe in her lifetime, this will be the last visit to Jairambati. She can't come again. She wiped her tears and she stood thinking that this will be her last visit to this holy place, the birthplace of mother. Maybe she would never again get this fortune to come to Jairambati again in her lifetime. It was almost 11 o'clock. It was pitch dark. As the whole village of Jairambati was asleep because, you know, it's a village. Quite everywhere, quite all around. The lady walked alone towards the temple. Now she couldn't withstand her grief, the divine discontentment. I can't meet mother. She was crying profusely and she left her guest house. You know, in Jairambati, if you're gone, the guest house, she's now walking towards the temple. She's coming towards the temple. Quite dark. Everything is quiet. Soon after a while, when she was coming towards the temple, she was astonished. What did she see? She saw Mother Sharda Devi sitting on one of the temple, side of the temple and cleaning the place surrounding this temple. As it was fully dark all around, but to her astonishment, the place where Mother was cleaning was full of light, was illuminated by divine light. The woman stood stunned this, you should know it happened. It has happened only 25, 30 years back. It is not some story or uh, this incident of the yo. Happened only 25, 30 years back. Because I've seen Ananya Ji Maharaj. I've served him. I have seen Revered Ranganathan Ji Maharaj. I have served him. And I have gone to this thing when he was the vice president in Jairam, sorry, in Hyderabad. So it is just 20 years or 25 years. So the place where mother was cleaning was illuminated by the divine light. The woman stood stunned thinking to herself that Holy Mother has given up her body many, many years back. But how is this possible that Sri Sri Ma is here? She became completely speechless. At that time, Mother Sharda Devi looked at that lady and told, Come, my dear child. Come, come sit here. That lady saw Sri Ma was approaching towards her. After a while, the lady regained consciousness and requested, Mother, 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 you need not do this work of cleaning. Please sit down. Please give me the broom or whatever you are cleaning. I shall do the cleaning. I shall clean the place. Hearing which, Sri Mother Sharada Devi laughed and told, When my daughter comes to the mother's house, can I make her work? I have to serve. I have to do the work. When my daughter has come to the mother's place, the mother has to work. Now the lady replied, Oh mother, then I shall call the other swamis, let them work. Why should you work? Swamis are also residing here. Then Sri Shima replied again, You see, my child, my boys are tired. They were working all the day. And they are taking rest for some time. Let us not disturb them. Now when the work was completed, there was some more conversation between the two of them. Do you know which language mother was conversing? In Telugu language. Because that lady is from Hyderabad. 
she knows only telugu no other language mother didn't know any other language other than bengali but now she was conversing with the same language how can mother know i'll tell you another pan swami atula anand ji maharaj was in usa by birth he was a dutch the body was of the dutch but he was settled a us citizen at that time he had met swami vivekananda he came to jairambati to get mantra diksha from holy mother in jairambati he went and took mantra diksha in jairambati after he came out he was so thrilled with joy with the experience given by the mother in that mantra diksha when somebody asked him another person or swami asked him you know only english and dutch mother doesn't know english or dutch and mother knows only bengali you do not know bengali how could mother converse with you and give the mantra diksha and give the instructions how is it possible no what was the reply to this reply of that person that is swami atulanand ji was a dutch by birth and uh, settled in america the reply was you'll be thrilled to hear it what will the mother which what language will the mother converse with the just born child now the child is just born what language that child knows which language does the mother converse with the child when it is just born does it know any language in that language mother converse with me and gave that instruction so now you can see this lady is talking mother is talking to her in telugu all the conversation is happening in telugu the mother that woman was surprised to see mother was speaking in her mother tongue telugu language she was fully astonished she did not understand anything and was completely blank because of joy everything which she saw and heard was so real and she was completely aware of everything going on she could see everything the tree the temple as she came to know it was not a dream it was not an imagination it was completely real as she was fully awake she couldn't believe it but can't let it be blown away also because she see everything converse now it is now too late shri shema told her my dear child go go to bed and take some rest as you have to leave tomorrow the lady as if mesmerized got up and started walking to the guest house you can see that guest house even now from the temple and saw that shri shri mom holy mother was looking at her towards the road side until she reached the house all the ladies who heard this other other two ladies who were sleeping there in the jairambati guest house when they heard it they were surprised after this woman reported everything that happened last night and thought that it was completely holy mother's grace and they decided not to tell it to anybody they didn't want to utter it because people without faith will not believe it so they didn't want to tell it to everybody everyone came back to hyderabad again they went to ashram and the next day they bowed down to the temple and went to revere swami ranganath anand ji maharaj and before they bowed down revered ranganath anand ji maharaj asked that lady who expressed that doubt and who got that vision revered ranganath anand ji maharaj to their surprise as soon as the woman who had doubted the mother's presence earlier and to whom revered ranganath anand ji maharaj told no mother leaves there without them talking about anything when they bowed down revered maharaj smilingly asked her what do you believe now mother exists in jairambati that is mother's grace now the woman asked maharaj how did you come to know the incidents which happened we never told anybody which took place in jairambati revered maharaj avoided further conversation but he answered with a song one bengali song two lines of bengali song what is that dark dekhi mon dakar moton dekhi shama kemon thakte pari i think our saumitra may be here the professor where is he he could understand that i will explain what is the meaning of that o oh mind call the mother since with sincerity with vyakulata call the mother with sincerity as you can call her as sincerely as possible and you can see 
how can mother keep quiet and will not come rushing to you? That is the meaning of that song. What did that revered Ranganath Anji Maharaj tell that song? Dark, they came on. Oh mind, call the mother with sincerity and see. Dakar moto. With that intensity, with that love, call the mother. Deki, let us see. Shama came on thakte pari. How can mother keep quiet and not come to you? That is the gist of the song. That's all. Call the mother and see how she will not come to you. Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Hi Om Tatsat Sri Ramakrishna Arkanamastu.